Well, good morning, YouTube and fellow pickers. This is Alex again, and I have here the thing that I actually, the only thing that I actually asked Bosnia and Bill for um, in response to his video on the SNG Environmental, and this is the SNG Environmental, which I will now open and hopefully pick open for you. I'm in a different spot with hopefully some better lighting, so we'll see how this goes. So here it is, opening the package. I've got my table, my chart all ready to go. Oh, look at this thing. Check this out. Look at the size of this. This. Let's see how much this weighs. When I pulled this out of the package, I could not believe how much it weighed. So I brought my... Uh, this is a really important reason to make sure the wife is not around, but I brought my, there it is, kitchen scale out, measures in pounds, oh, and grams, for those of you in Europe. This is the whole lock with the chain and everything attached. Let's just put that on there. So that's about, I'd call that about two, two pounds, I don't know. 6, 12 ounces, 13 ounces, or about, I don't know, 1,200 grams. And just try to weigh the, just the lock itself. So we're not weighing the chain. You can see that reads in it. Oh, well, I'd say just shy of 2 pounds, uh, maybe 800 grams. So, if I'm reading that correctly, yeah. So, that's a big honking piece of steel right there. I'll just uh, get that down there as far as it'll go. And it's all locked up. You can see that. Made in the USA, I'd love to see that. Let's, I'm gonna start by, by zeroing the discs, as Bill instructed. So I'm gonna rotate them all the way to the rightmost position. Okay, this is the tool I use when I'm failing to open uh, um, other types of disc locks. Let's see. Now, what Bell said to do, especially for those of us that are dimensionally challenged, is to mark the 90 degree point, or that I guess this is zero, and then this is 90. And this is going to be 45 right in there, approximately. Okay, let's try this one more time. I am having a dyslexic problem here, and uh, which is not uncommon for me. I'll edit out the crap in the middle. Let's do take three. Still don't have it. Well, maybe in for take four at this rate. Okay, so problem one is that I'm a dyslexic fool and I was getting my 90 and my 45 mixed, or my zero mixed up, I think. Okay, so let's try this again. You know, I thought I'd have this in like one take, but so it goes. There's two at zero. I can see number one. Or that first disc, I can see him. Okay, now all my discs are set in theory. And I'm loving. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Now, let's just look at the top of this again. That's an O1. There's no doubt about that. O1. Okay, hopefully, the last take. And Bill, this is. This is a good bit harder than I than it looked on your video, so major respect, man. Bill, your tool is much better. It's a much better even though you had to make it yourself, I think. It just from watching your video, I think that it did a better job than this Peterson, but I don't know, maybe I brought the wrong Peterson tool. Let's try something else. Let's try something else. You know, the human eye is pretty good at this sort of thing. So let's say that that, I'd say that's about level. Okay, so my problem was that the diagram was incorrect, at least for my at least for number one, 001. That is what I found worked. I transposed the zero and the ninety. So the code says um, for one hundred one ninety zero forty five. So that's ninety on that front wheel. And if I can catch it, and bring number two, I'm jacking up 45 on my last wheel. 45 seems to be the most fiddly one to get. Here it comes. There it is. And you can see, actually you can see really well, but I can come in just a little closer for you. You can see that the disc pack has rotated. I left the 45 where it was. And just there. I don't know, you can't really see the back wheel, but now behemoth is free. Zoom back out. This thing is free. So you can see here number one. Number one, a little bit of a raking light on it. Sergeant and Greenleaf. You can see very interestingly, I don't, actually I don't know if you can see it, but inside the drain hole, well, I guess where this thing attaches, oops, there we go, where this thing attaches, that appears to be hardened steel and that's actually, um, looks like it's swaged in there pretty well. Um, these um, the cuts on this shackle. If I zoom back out, so we can have a little more free play here. Zoom. There we go. The cuts on the shackle are almost halfway through, and the ball bearings are just enormous compared to any other lock I've seen, except maybe some of the other military locks. Yeah, you can see that nicely. Um, and it's actually really clean. I don't know if Bill cleaned it up or if it just came that way. I wish it were possible to take the uh, take the cylinder apart because I'd love to see what that looks like inside. But um, there's a little roll pin in there, but I don't know. If I can get that out non-destructively, I might consider it. But 
Um, I don't know. That seems that seems dangerous. What I ended up using was um, this piece of wire that fell on the floor, this little thing, which I had made for manipulating um, lever locks, padlocks, and so forth. And it seemed to give me the best control um, coming in here and had less of a chance of moving more than one disc at a time. So I'm going to see if I can index on three the third wheel in there, third disc <laughs> of course, another wrong camera get that way the fuck back there another wrong camera Okay, here he comes. Now, the 45 is, actually, that's about it, um, right there. You can't really gauge off of this because I it slips a little bit, so even though the handle and the tip are square, or parallel, roughly, um, you can't really gauge off of that. So now my code the next disc is zero. You'd think after doing this like 12 times I'd have it memorized, but like I said, I'm a little dyslexic. And by a little dyslexic, I mean very dyslexic. So there goes disc two. And I can sort of peek in there and see that disc one is still in place. Okay, disc zero here. Now, the key was that I needed to tension on something other than this disc, obviously, because I don't think, yeah, I don't think the lock is going to function on that disc. Okay, so let's make sure he's good and set. And if I got everything right, I come back to disc two. Oh, and it's really close, but I either didn't grab it right or. Jack something up, or no. so I think number three maybe wants to come down a little bit. That 45 is the, for me at least, the killer. Come on now. Just a little bitch. Yeah. There it goes. And open. Okay. So my conclusions are this so the video cut out there for me. Um, I was saying if you can get your hands on one of these things, I would recommend it. Super fun pick. Awesome lock. V very different than any other disc detainer you're going to see out there um, uh, in terms of picking it. Um, just the what you have to do to get in there um, and the complete lack of any feedback um, if you're trying to pick it without, the, without Bill's codes. Um, so... Anyhow, um, I really wanted to thank Bill, uh, Bosnia and Bill, for um, for the lock, for being so generous, and of course the other um, goodies that he sent, um, and uh, and for his just awesome contribution to the, uh, the online community. Um, and uh, I've got a couple more videos to come, so stay tuned. This is Alex, and as always, have fun and keep it legal. Thanks.